How's it going my bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to another video. Today we're actually not baking, we're frying. I'll show you how to make samosa. So let's get in the kitchen and get started. Samosa was one of my favorite snacks when I was on vacation in India a couple of years ago. It is a flaky deep fried spiced potato filled pastry. They're being sold on every corner, especially during breakfast time. Almost every morning I used to grab a couple with a few fried chilies and then get on with my day of exploring. And as it turns out, they are pretty easy to make. It'll be a fun little weekend project. So let's get right to it and let me show you how it's done. Starting with the ingredients for the pastry. Now usually samosa pastry is made with maida. It's a type of low gluten flour. I'm just using plain flour here. We'll also need some salt, water, vegetable oil and some ashwan seeds. But I couldn't get a hold of them so I'm using cumin seeds. For the filling, we'll need potatoes, peas, onion, ginger, chili, fresh coriander, lemon juice, a little bit of oil, some fennel seed, coriander seed, cumin powder, garam masala, mild chili powder, some asafoetida, some salt and some oil for deep frying. Now don't worry about all the seasonings and spices, you can adjust those to your taste. When it comes to the equipment, we'll need a pan for frying, a bowl for mixing our dough in, scales, a dough scraper, we'll need a rolling pin and something to fish the samosa out of the oil with. A slotted metal spoon will work great for this. Okay, first things first, let's cook the potatoes and I'm going to bake them. You could boil your potatoes, but I prefer baked potatoes. They are not as watery and they have more flavor. One hour, 200 degrees Celsius should do it. And whilst the potatoes are baking, Let's make the dough or the pastry. In a large bowl, combine the flour, the seeds and the salt. Give it a quick mix and then add the oil. Gluten is the enemy here and that is why we are mixing the oil with the flour before adding the water. This way we are coating the flour in oil and preventing long gluten strands from forming. The water is just there to moisten things up. Add it and mix it until there's no dry flour left. Right after mixing, weigh your dough bowl and divide it into 5 equal pieces. This recipe makes 10 samosas, but because of the unique shaping method, we only need 5 dough balls. After dividing, shape the dough pieces into round balls. The dough will not be very stretchy, so don't expect it to feel like a bread dough. It is loose, it is not even, it might be even a little bit crumbly, but that is totally normal. Just make the dough balls as round as you can. After shaping, place them all on a tray or on a plate, cover them with some cling film, and then leave them in the fridge to cool down for at least 30 minutes, or until the filling is ready. It is so much easier to work with cold dough. Whenever you are making something like this, it is worth chilling the dough down. Just make your life easier. You can even make the dough balls and the filling a whole day ahead of time. Just leave them in the fridge until you're ready to cook. If you're going to make these for a party, you'll save yourself some time on the day. Okay, let's get these bad boys in the fridge and continue on with making the filling. It's been about an hour and my potatoes are ready. If you're not sure of the doneness of your potato, give it a squeeze or poke it with a knife. If the potatoes feel soft and if the knife goes in easily, they're ready. Now leave them to cool down and then proceed to peeling them and cutting them into large chunks. I guess you could also make this with roasted new potatoes. They have such a thin skin, you could just leave it on. It would only taste better and they would be far quicker to bake. Only about 30 minutes would do it. I'll leave that decision up to you. But regardless of what you do, cut your potatoes into large chunks and then move on to finishing the filling. If you're going to use whole spices like I am, then toast them first to get the most flavor out of them. So I'm dropping my coriander seeds and my fennel seeds in the pot and placing it on high heat. Toast for a couple minutes until the seeds become nice and fragrant and they start changing color. Next, add the oil, the onions, the ginger and the chili. Cook them for a couple minutes until they become soft and fragrant. Next, add the peas, the salt and all the spice powders. In my case, that will be cumin, garam masala, asafoetida and chili powder. If you are using a stainless steel pan, the spices will want to stick to it. So soon after mixing them in, add the coriander and the potatoes. Break the potatoes up into smaller pieces and mix them in with the other ingredients. Don't mash the potatoes up completely, leave them chunky. And then finally, add the lemon juice and mix it in. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't need to worry about sourcing all the spices. You could just go the quick and dirty route and use curry powder instead. It'll still turn out nice. Okay, once the filling is done, transfer it to a bowl and leave it to cool down completely. Do not try to stuff the samosa with warm filling. It will ruin the dough. Once the filling has cooled down, you are ready to fry your samosa. Fill up your pot with oil and place it on medium to high heat. And now comes the fun part, the unique shaping method. The dough balls are nice and stiff from the cold. They'll be easy to work with. We'll work with them one by one. 
dust your table and the dough bowl lightly with flour. I've seen recipes in which they use oil instead of flour for rolling, but I prefer flour. Roll the dough ball out to a long oval shape, about 20 centimeters or around 8 inches long. Don't worry if it's a little bit rough around the edges, as long as it's more or less straight, it will do. Now take your dough scraper and cut the dough right down the middle. Each piece will be used for one samosa. The side which has been cut with the scraper needs to be shaped into a cone shape. And here's how. Place the dough so that the straight side is facing you. Then pick up the two corners, fold them up and let them meet up in the middle. Overlap them and then squeeze them together. And then work your way down and seal up that seam. And you should end up with a little pastry cone. And if none of that made sense, just watch my hands and repeat. Okay, hold the cone in your hand and then carefully fill it up with a couple of tablespoons of potato filling. To ensure that the cone gets filled up to the very bottom, start off with just a little bit of filling, but don't fill it up to the very top. Leave a little flap of exposed dough. Hold the cone so that the seam side is facing you, and then fold over the loose piece of dough from the other side and mate it up with the other edge. And then press the two together firmly, ensure that all the seams are completely sealed up. Otherwise, they may open as the dough fries. Some recipes suggest brushing a little bit of water on the dough before sealing it up. But if you press it together firmly enough, it should not come open. But if you're not sure, use a bit of water, it's not gonna hurt. After filling the cone, folding up the dough, and sealing up all the seams, you can manipulate the samosa to give it its final shape. And this is kind of how they should look. Well, let's get these bad boys in the oil. As you can see, there's some random stuff floating in there. One of them did explode on my first try. I did not press it together firmly enough. Fry your samosas at 180 degrees Celsius, 355 Fahrenheit for around 6 minutes. They should develop a nice golden brown color and a bubbly crust. If you don't want to fry them, you could also bake them. Go with the same temperature in the oven for around 20 to 25 minutes. Baking will make them a lot less fatty, but it is the fat that makes them so delicious. If you can't make up your mind, you can bake half of them and fry the other half. Once they are ready, Drain them off, you can use a rack or some kitchen paper, leave them to cool down a bit and then tuck in. As I mentioned in the beginning, usually they are sold with some fried chilies on the side. And you could just drop some chilies in the oil while you are frying the samosa and then once they are ready, sprinkle them with some sea salt. That is a very simple and delicious method to cook them. That is of course if you are a bit of a chili head. I did not fry my chilies this time because I had some chili chutney in the fridge. It is sweet, super spicy and delicious and it works so well with a fatty samosa. I could not get enough of these things and I'm sure you'll feel the same. So what do you think of this recipe? Have you ever tried making samosa? Have you eaten samosa? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel. Click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.